right? The day we've been waiting for is here. We have a smaller little raft that we're going to assemble on site here. It's mostly in this SUV, the Suburban here. And we'll load it up with gear and we're taking off for probably a week. So the boat we were going to take, way too heavy and the river is extremely low right now. So we're just going to start building this and uh, go from there. We're just kind of winging it this year. Lots of people here with regular boats and they're looking at us. Ordered an eight by eight. Looks looks about right. Way easier than the last wrap. We got all the gear on here. And we're just waiting for the vehicles to get dropped off. Then we're gonna push off and <laughs> see where the river takes us. And we got these buckets here. This is the anchor bucket. We, we screwed these right onto the platform. Crazy neighbor did. And we got water as well. Um, our water jugs fit right into there, so they're not going anywhere as precarious as it looks. We're off. Okay, we, we have launched. Um, yes, we have. It's, <laughs> we'll have to balance some weight. Uh, we seem to be, I don't know, it's, it's stable, but it's yeah. not floating super high. No. But that's okay. Oh, I'm gonna have to push pull around this, uh, these poor kayakers here. Just kind of steering us with this paddle where I need to. Okay, good. So uh, crazy neighbors steering from back there. I'm steering from up here and we got to get through the city of Edmonton and it's not looking promising because we got like an hour and a half of sunlight left and the first little bit on the boat is uh, life jacket territory until we see what it does but uh, so far I'm pretty impressed and as soon as we start to eat the food and drink the water things will lighten up in the boat and we'll float a bit higher. Bit of a serious row club here. I don't know if they know what to make of us. Man, let it run. Well, then, just by the way, I guess we've always been toxic, but the, uh, the traffic pattern is like do the best you can. But the traffic pattern is like upstream on that side, and then uh, downstream on this side. Okay. Uh, town tonight. We were hoping to make it to the outskirts of town, but that's not going to happen. We're not even in downtown yet, so we might have to do a little night sailing to get through the city to somewhere more acceptable. We're just doing a flashlight inventory to see if we have enough light to do a night float. super shallow river so we are gonna have to do a little bit of night sailing but we're going slow because we're just floating with the water and as soon as we can find a good spot to camp we will be pulling over to camp but a good spot is not anywhere through downtown I'll say that
Yeah, we are stuck for the first time here. And really glad we don't have that bigger boat because <laughs> that would be a disaster. Uh, I don't know how far this goes. It looks like about 100 yards. We may have to get out and walk this thing. We'll start with the pry bars um, and see what we can do from there. Going in, got the water shoes on. We're gonna have to go in here and uh, yeah, it's chilly. Yeah, just as I thought. Yeah, we're just a little bit too heavy. Just two people too heavy. What do you weigh, Glenn? Probably 180 pounds. I'm about 150. I see. Okay, yeah, we're getting somewhere. Yep. Okay. No, not yet. I'm just about to my knees here. So I think we're... we're... No? Okay, well it, it deepens up here, kind of. Oh yeah. I'll know when here. Just doesn't get any better than this. There we go. Ah, we're floating again quite nicely here. Just avoiding these bridge pillars because they got a sharp angle. And if we take that sideways, it could flip us over. We don't want that. Just a little bit more downtown to get through then we're into a bit of a residential stretch and there could be a good camping spot there but there's also a sewage factory so we're gonna have to go a little bit past that it's probably nine o'clock crazy neighbor you know the time oh let me see 9 23 <laughs> we're still on the river so it could be an all-nighter or a late nighter anyways because we'll have to get past that uh that sewage plant if we want to have a, any type of a sleep at all. No sense trying to fight the current. We just have to kind of go with it and try to avoid the pillars. last bridge for a while. Aren't you sure look different from under these, eh? Yeah, don't they though? I don't walk this fast for 15 minutes, Steve. Yeah. We've left the downtown core behind, and right now, this would be a great spot to camp, but there's a really fancy neighborhood right there, and this is not a very fancy boat. Right behind me here is where we finished last year's journey, and it's all new river for me past this point. So let's see what the river holds for us. Yeah, we're straightening out. Look at this. Well, we're stuck again. This time is right across from the sewage refinery. So we're not staying here. <laughs> the wind is coming right at us. Water uh, shoes. Time for the water shoes. We're gonna push this thing out again and try to make a little more distance. All right. We are free and paddling away from this sewage brewery as fast as we can. Uh, we're stopping for the night. It's about two in the morning. And of course we're stopping right by the refinery and the sewage station um, <laughs> of all places. Thankfully it doesn't uh, reek that badly here. 
but I'm gonna put some walls on this because the wind is whipped up and it's just uh, it's a headwind for us and we're in some slow water so it's been a long enough day <laughs> Good morning. Um, yeah, we just had a pretty shameful setup last night. We hung a couple tarps. Uh, we didn't even cook dinner. We just fell asleep because it was so late and we've been paddling so much. But we're on the river again now, making progress. We don't hit this big pile of wood here. got a tailwind for once uh, making our way out of the city three more bridges to go and then it's smooth sailing all the high water marks on these bridge pillars show us that the river is low we got no idea what this place is a lot of no trespassing signs a lot of cameras and a lot of fence and this strange building with the lights on My soul was quaking and I was sitting there debating whether I should stay in this dirty town or grab my gear and hunker down, so I hunkered down. Well, I guess I'm like that, I'm a real live wire, just a nice cold beer and a bushcraft fire. Ain't that the truth? The hell ain't no liar. Need a ratchet strap and a piece of wire to regain all of my youth. And I'm gonna build a tree house on my new land with my crazy neighbor and to spread out hands and leave the world behind with all this big demands. All That I freely give to you You gotta move from step one And head to step two Well this is the life That's what they say And some like to give And some like to take And some save for tomorrow And some live for today I can't think of any other cliche Well, except what I got Is what you need Like a drunk needs a bottle And a hippie needs weed I'm too proud to beg I'm too big to bleed I don't need no one to come down I've only personally known one person that's ever caught a fish on this river and his crazy neighbor on last year's trip. We're just about to pull into an island for the night, if Google Maps is accurate. There were a few other good looking spots here to pull in and camp a little further back, but there's a trail close by. We're fairly close to another town, but that's okay. That's the best we can do uh, for right now. So we should be pulling into this island in no time. Whoa, we got, uh, oh yeah, oh, that's good. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, welcome to Dope Buy Knockoff Brand Rubbermaid Tubs with Steve. Um, <laughs> that whole plan didn't work. We missed, we missed the island. Uh, we missed. Uh, I'm just gonna sit over here. We missed the island. We missed the boat launch uh, to get into town for supplies for tomorrow. Um, yeah. Uh, we're gonna put walls on here. 
Uh, we were hoping to have a fire out there, um, but it's way too muddy and somebody's gonna slip and break their leg. And it will be me. So we made it at long last. It was uh, another uh, probably 25 kilometers today. In total, we've done about 48 kilometers, which is like 30 miles or so, uh, just with the river flow. Uh, we're hoping to do another 85 kilometers. So <laughs> we got a little bit to go, but we got a few days. We've been paddling a lot, a lot, <laughs> like a lot, because uh, with no motor, pretty much. The whole goal is just stay in the center of the river because it wants to throw you to one side or the other. And that's been the biggest struggle aside from having a smaller boat than we're used to and we got a lot of gear in here so it's uh, we're cramped quarters a little. Um, I'm going to try and run up the hill tomorrow to grab a few other things. Uh, I think there's a flashlight that I was counting on that has broken on us. I think it's... Uh, definitely gonna be a full a full few days here and oh yeah you're cheesing your dog you gotcha all right we got stuff for better meals than this we were up early this morning we were uh, floating at uh, just a few minutes after eight yeah I was actually still asleep and I noticed the boat was moving <laughs> <laughs> crazy neighbors just couldn't wait to go yeah. Cheers, guys. Uh, I'm just gonna eat this. See you in the morning. Good morning. That was an awesome sleep. First one I've had in several days here, so I feel really refreshed. My arms uh, are all healed up from all that paddling, surprisingly. It's a beautiful day outside. And I have to do the hike into town to the grocery store because I need milk. A flashlight and some batteries because we've had a flashlight mishap and I couldn't find the shelf stable milk I wanted on the way out of town. So backpack and we're going to go for a trip. Here we go. Okay. Alright. So crazy neighbor's gonna stay here and guard our worldly possessions. And I'll just follow this gangplank to shore. It's a little tippy, but it's okay. Okay, uh, this little beaver slide here should get us right up to the trail. So we're one town up the river right now in Fort Saskatchewan, and I'm about 15 minutes away from one of my favorite grocery store chains. So let's turn right to stay on West Park Road. Right on, 15 minutes later, we made it. All right, back to the boat. One hour exactly. All right, so that little trip took one hour exactly according to Crazy Neighbors uh, stopwatch. And we're about to rip the wall panels off this thing so we can see what we're doing and push off for another glorious, beautiful Autumn Alberta day on the river.
we're stuck. Um, the wind has been pretty bad today, so we gotta wait for it to calm down before we try to push us out into the main channel again, because otherwise it'll just blow us right back to shore. So we're just hunkering down and uh, crazy neighbors making up some grilled cheese sandwiches. We gotta use the barbecue with the frying pan on it because that other uh, butane stove doesn't like the wind. So this is where we're at, just hunkering down by the river. Dig in there, Steve. Thanks, crazy neighbor. Mm, a lot of cheese on there. Real pan of cheese, yum. Looks like the wind's dying down. So we'll chow down on this and then push out and see how far we can get. Okay, just about my ankles, Steve. Just like oh, that. Oh wow, we're floating already. It floats. <laughs> now we gotta drag this thing out. As far as we can get it, right? Much farther. It's, uh... Okay, I'm... You getting deep there? Getting a little deeper. A little deeper. A little deeper. Yeah, we've been stuck for a couple hours waiting for the wind to die down. Having it lunch. Did, it didn't die down. We had some lunch, but we figured let's have to try I think and launch. We can jump in now, sometime. Steve. You well, try jumping in, then I'll get in last. I can. Yeah, here we go. Okay. I'm in, and yeah, we're not. Maybe Much. come to this side just in case I need some help getting in. Okay. Uh, I'll keep pushing out. All right. Okay, we're going good. We're going real good. Yes, we are. Let's Still see, pretty show. Yep. Going in. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Needed that. Okay. Uh, it's floating way faster than we are. We got the paddle. It took a lot of push pulling, but uh, we did get the paddle. See that every day. First island we found that looks actually suitable for camping on. We're gonna get to this island, hopefully have a fire, and the sun is just about to set, so we got maybe an hour of twilight left. Let's go for this. Okay. Rope. Got the rope. Okay. We're just pulling her in here. Barrels are floating about halfway. That's what they like to do. And I'm gonna see if down this way it gets a little deeper. Well, you take that big log that's over there and mm -hmm. try to rip to it. Uh, we pulled the raft up as far as we could to the island so that we can get these gangplanks out. Uh, they're a little sketchy, but walking sideways with two of them, uh, it's possible. And, uh, okay. What could be safer than that? Uh, so we're getting a campfire going. I'm gonna throw the sides on this thing and get a meal cooking. For once, something that's uh, not hot dogs or chips or grilled cheese sandwiches. Campfire in a can.
getting ready for my simple meal ground beef and scalloped potato mix uh, it's one of my standbys just gonna brown up some ground beef here and just doing it on the barbecue because that's what we're gonna do to make the scalloped potatoes just put it all in these little trays and uh, put the lid down on the barbecue barbecue works almost as an oven I can get it to hover around 400 degrees Fahrenheit so it's just great and it kind of works as a frying pan so that uh, spatula, my, spatula dealy? yeah oh <laughs> spatula dealy. spatula dealy. it's a new foreign language right on aha voila browned ground dump this into one of these things for now. Yeah, here you are. Okay, I divided up that pound of ground beef between the two little trays here, and just got these boxes of scalloped potatoes. And dumping them all in and making them as usual. It wants a cup of water, no, a cup and a quarter of water and a cup of uh, milk. Let's do almost two cups of milk in each. Oh, these are going to be full. Oh, yeah. Okay. Those flakes don't take up much room. Uh, two table forks of, <laughs> I can't believe it's not better. Table fork? Table forks. How long is this going to take? I don't know. <laughs> don't know? The recipe doesn't tell us. <laughs> well, it's based on a real oven and following the instructions. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> I guess we sit back and wait. Maybe throw the walls on this thing, but it's such a nice view. It um, it's a little bit better than the cooking view I had in the last video uh, in, the <laughs> in the dismantled house. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. It does too. Just let those cool down for a sec. I think so. And we'll dig in. These have cooled down nicely. And look at what we got. These nice little casserole uh, dishes of uh, empty calories. Empty calories? <laughs> yeah, well. Oh yeah, this is this is one of my favorites for sure, 100%. Looks like one of the straps fell off of the boat, so we have to deal with that. All right, extremely cozy here. Um, how about you, crazy neighbor? Great, <laughs> nice and warm. Well, night guys, uh, we'll see you in the morning. morning I can hear our natural enemy already moving the walls of this tent around so it's gonna be another day involving some paddling hopefully not quite as much as yesterday though because we've got some distance to cover today the original spot we were gonna stop is about 52 kilometers away we're not gonna make that if we're doing another day like we did we need uh, 17 K a day on the next three days or so to do that and that could be tricky to get to where we want. But there's two other spots we can get off at the river. One, Highway 38 there. There's an access underneath. And that we could comfortably do. And if things get even worse than that, there is another access right here. It's actually slightly before the bridge. That looks like... Oh, yeah, that's a really good one, yeah. A little watch. And those are our options, so we're going to see what happens oh, after. what we do today. Yeah, exactly. We'll figure it out. Just 
taking a peek at this island to see what we can see. You can see the water really comes up a lot higher here. What we're walking on, I'd be underwater most times of the year right now. And I don't know if I've ever done a trip at high water. I think I've always done it in September, October, uh, even going way back 10 years. But uh, that'd be a treat to be able to do that. It's another little dried out channel here from when the river's higher and it meanders through the island by the looks of it. That is not a daisy, that is scentless chamomile and it's invasive. Most of this island is just really dense brush and there's some game trails through it but not a whole lot else. Let's see if I can get back to the boat. First issue with the boat so far. This uh, barrel strap here. Now it's not broken, but it just slipped off the barrel. And just examining the bottom of this, it's held up good. That's, that's not even frayed. And we've really, we've really been putting this through the paces on the rocks here. So I'd say with these straps, you have not much to worry about if you're using it on a lake where you don't hit a lot of stuff. And even on a river, it's doing the job. So we're gonna try to drag this out. And fix that. The river's back up to almost where it was yesterday. It was a little low this morning, but uh, not a concern. Let's see if we can drag this out. Right on, repair well done. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, I think it's time to jump in. All right, now let's paddle like madmen. Thank you. brunch on the go and we're low. I'm just gonna have to step out and walk us along a little bit here. As... Oh, now it floats. <laughs> Most of this trip so far has been through Alberta's industrial heartland, and we're not known for candy and toy factories, so there's been quite a few refineries. We've actually camped by one pretty much every night so far, and I'm hoping this is probably the last one um, as soon as we pass a fertilizer plant. <laughs> Next year, uh, this part will be done, so we can just see pure nature.
bacon sandwiches. Mm. Good cheese. Even real cheese today. Mm -hmm. Aren't we fancy? Yeah, we just bounced into the shore here. Uh, we're not beached, we just have to push off, but this is a nice rest spot for food done. Mm. Crisp but not burnt? Mm-hmm, just perfect. You cook a good bacon. Yeah, thank you, Steve. found a really good looking spot here. We're gonna try and actually just camp here for the night. Yeah, I think this will do. Awesome. Could take the life jacket off. Spot like this doesn't come along often. We both couldn't pass it up as soon as we saw it. We got a firewood feast. The water's nice and deep and comes up to rocks. We can get in and out without getting our feet wet. We can push off easy in the morning. Train bridge in the distance. Uh, there is a happy little refinery back there by the looks of it. So the glow of those uh, flare stacks will keep us uh, company at night. Beavers, beavers, beavers. Nothing but beavers around here. So, at long last, it's time for a step two. We haven't been able to enjoy one because we've been on the boat so much, and that's a no-no on the boat. Uh, even if it doesn't have a motor on it, even if it's a tube or a canoe, it's a no-no around here. But uh, going through Fort Saskatchewan, we ran into Paul and his son Jack, and they dropped off a care package for us. They caught word we were going through town and uh, yeah so it's time for step two uh, German Pilsner cheers cheers mm. oh yes very good oh that's been a thirsty few days there <laughs> yeah uh, well I guess it's sober o sober October uh, yeah. so we're we're <laughs> easing into that <laughs> Uh, I thought we'd hit the jackpot with all this firewood here. Um, but then I saw the beaver there and I feel bad now. We're just burning poor thing's retirement fund. dinner time. Uh, the wind really whipped up here and we're having our delicious 
shaved beef and au jus with uh, onion buns, horseradish, uh, au jus for dipping. So, uh, digging, oh, oh, digging, crazy neighbor. <laughs> yeah, coleslaw too for a vegetable. No, it's so juicy, it's dripping right out of the bun. What about that? That's a good thing. Yeah, I agree. Alright, that was a pretty good sleep, hey? What do you think, crazy neighbor? Oh, I did really good, yeah. Good. Well, today is overcast, chilly, and smoky. chocolate kind of day. Yes it is. So we've been averaging around one kilometer an hour um, or 0.6 miles an hour. What the current really wants to do is just between the current and the wind it pushes us to one side and we just sit there in some back eddy. So we've been doing a lot of paddling just to try and stay in the center of the river and it will be power next year for sure. What do you think? Uh... You got tired of paddling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If it isn't our lucky day, we've been at uh, three to four kilometers now for quite some time. I'm sure you can't really see that, but uh, yeah, 3.3, 3.4 kilometers. And that should give us the speed we need to at least get to a pickup point in a couple of days, because I was starting to get a bit concerned. Great, there's some pipe over there rhythmically squirting jets of water into the river. I hope it's water. I 
another one of these things. I think it's suctioning in water for the refinery. That's my suspicion. Geology. Ah, truly majestic. We're gonna try and get past the fertilizer plant here before we camp for the night. All this wildfire smoke is masking the aroma from the fertilizer plant, so it's uh, a good thing. Nature's air freshener. So cooling towers are pretty big. I don't know how much they need to cool things down, but uh, it seems like overkill to me. But I'm not in the fertilizer industry. Yeah, we found a pretty good spot here, so we're going to try and tie up here. There seems to be a little bit of wood, and wow, everything's really lush with the runoff from that fertilizer plant. What a perfect spot. Here we are. We're anchored up. We've got kind of some rocks here and wound a bunch of rope around them on both sides. we got the anchor there, so we shouldn't be going anywhere beautiful swift current for the morning water drops off really quickly which is great so we can yeah we can just push off in the morning and sail uh, this part of the river is like the Garden of Eden if it wasn't so smoky we'd have a beautiful day and we would have just been floating away um, without a care in the world but it's a little chilly. I got like two jackets on. Uh, it claims to be 14 Celsius, but that's clearly not the way it feels. We're going to throw the tarps onto this thing. And tonight we're going to have a pizza party. Pete's party time. Uh, got a big pita bread here. You make probably a couple of these for us. What do you think? Uh, I think so. How many can you eat tonight? Well, I'll eat one for sure. All right. Well, let's get you started. Well, that train's just not giving up, eh? No, it's not. I like that noise, though. I don't mind it as long as you're not right beside the trucks. I remember as a kid in BC camping with my dad when I was like seven or eight years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems every campground in BC is right beside a railway track. And, and we're in a tent and I was having these nightmares of this train coming right through the tent. Could happen if you're set up on the tracks. Well, we weren't, but we were like, you know, within a hundred yards of the tracks. You know, that's the cheapest I've seen you with cheese on every, any dish I've ever seen you make. <laughs> Just, here we go. All right. On it goes. On it goes. We'll put more cheese on, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yum, yum. Good. We fired up the heater because it's going to be a little cold tonight and it is certainly time to hunker down. We'll see you guys in the morning, bright and early, and we may be at our final destination tomorrow. Good morning. The river has dropped uh, quite a bit, at least a foot. So we're going to have to do some fancy pry bar in this morning to get out of here. But it's not the end of the world. We've got about 10 kilometers or six miles to go till we get to our last campsite of the journey. Um, I'm pretty sure we should be able to do that. 
there is a lot less smoke in the air today and still no wind so that's that's great news let's push this thing off and let last uh, full day of the journey begin Bye, camping spot. Bye. All right, we're getting some sunshine for the first time in over a day. That's awesome. At this point in the river, we are leaving behind any of the refineries, fertilizer plants, processing facilities, chemical plants rendering plants and we have nothing but beautiful open river in front of us peaceful and majestic what a time for the journey to end wow yeah we've got probably 6k to go six five five to six k and then we're camping under a bridge tonight the same bridge where we're going to get picked up tomorrow That's not a good spot to get stuck. <laughs> yeah. No. That was like the biggest rock we've seen so far. In deep water. In the fastest part of the deepest part of the river. So, all right, uh, that really got the blood pumping. Little shack on the side of the river. I could live a happy life there. Right, I can see the bridge we're getting off at right now, and we're stuck, of course, because that's the name of the game. This may require getting wet today, which I was hoping not to because we were so close to finishing the trip. And this is actually fairly swift water. I wouldn't want to fall in right here. So we're just going to have some food. Then um, being stuck here is a problem for a future Steve. Oh, yeah. Okay. Seem to do it. Just rock, rock the, the ball. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good. Well, that was easy. Nope. <laughs> oh, party's not over yet. Okay. Yeah. Don't take off that light jacket quite yet. Great. An eerie calm. Just what I like. Yeah, that bridge up there is our final destination. We'll stop under there, relax for the afternoon, see if we can catch a fish. Um, <laughs> what do you think our odds on that are? <laughs> well, we know what this is all about. Oh like that floats a bunch higher and we're gonna try and walk this along to somewhere that's a little deeper We got our depths back, somewhat. So close to that bridge. Final destination here, under the bridge. That'll be our camping spot for the night. What do you think, crazy neighbor? Scenic enough for you? Oh yeah. I think it is. up 
under the bridge here and the water is rising which will work to our benefit. Uh, what happens is the water tends to creep up around this time of day, probably up to there. Then in the morning it's way back out again. So when the water goes up we're gonna haul the boat as far as we can get it up onto the shore. Then in the morning it's gonna be ready for us to take it apart and throw it in a truck. So up here Oh yeah, well, I could camp under this thing. <laughs> Yeah, some people have spray painted some pretty rude things on the bridge, but it looks like they put up a fence and a barrier to stop people from doing that. Oh, I can see crazy neighbor. Hey! <laughs> we got really limited cell service out here, but the ironic part is a buried fiber optic cable right here. Too bad I couldn't just tie into that. They should have a little plug-in in there. We have the boat pulled in as far as we're gonna get it. Crazy Neighbor basically passed out right after that. I've been editing some video. And we have a heater going and it is cold. Below freezing tonight for sure. And uh, I'm still feeling it. Um, I think I'm probably crawling right into my sleeping bag without any dinner tonight. I am calling it a night. It is cold. I'm just going to sleep off my hunger. <laughs> and it's going to be a crispy morning. I know it already. And we got a boat to take apart. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Ah, that moment when you wake up and say, Oh yeah, I'm under a bridge on the side of the river. Um, it was actually a pretty good sleep. Uh, a little chilly, but the sleeping bag held up okay. Uh, crazy Neighbor is still sleeping. I've done some editing and I'm going to start getting things organized because uh, it's about time to go home. As we're packing up to head back to reality, um, I have to give a huge shout out to all the beer donations that have came in. Now, it's probably a long list because um, I didn't get one out last week. I really don't like to put the shout outs on a kind of a, an update video. I want to do it on more of, you know, something like this. Um, so thanks, thanks to everybody. And thanks uh, to those who have, have sent uh, something to Crazy Neighbor as well. I know a few people have. And, yes. About to get back to indoor plumbing and it's been a while so I can't wait to take a big huge steaming shower. Boat. Time to take the boat apart. Uh, I'm trying to get the screw 
We've got a lot of the gear dragged up the hill here and pretty much just have to take apart this platform and throw it up the hill as well. And how did these hold up? <laughs> Not too shabby. For all those that uh, are worried about ratchet straps on the bottom, we really abused this and held up just fine for that little journey. Thanks everybody for watching this year's adventure. We try to do one every year and we're going to leave from approximately where we stopped the year before. Uh, if you like these types of things, please consider subscribing uh, and I'll keep making these as long as people keep watching. I'm thrilled to have you guys all along on this adventure. Uh, see you soon in the comments guys and uh, keep them friendly. Uh, there will be a stealth next week I think. So we've, we've heard enough about the river for a little bit. Cheers everybody and we'll see you next Thursday.